How much does all this mean for the state? Joining us now from Trenton, the executive director of the New Jersey Lottery, Carol Hedinger. Carol, good of you to join us. Have you ever seen anything quite like this? No, I never have. As a matter of fact, I can't even quite get my head around the size of this jackpot, which, by the way, rose from our estimate of $540 million yesterday to $640 million this morning based on the accumulated sales. Does this put any extra burden or stresses on the system in terms of, of selling and processing and handling all of this? No, in fact, yesterday we did a check of our systems. We were only running at about under 10% of capacity for the gaming system. Where does this, when you sit at the beginning of the year, do you actually budget what you think the revenue is going to be for the year, how much you think will come in, how big the jackpots will get? We do try to forecast uh, our revenues, and of course, forecasting jackpots is about the hardest thing to do because it all depends on uh, luck, uh, and you never know how many j uh, times jackpots are going to get hit. As a matter of fact, this year, the Mega Millions average jackpots have only been running around $70 million. That was a little low. So it was very hard to predict what our revenue would be for this year. I think with uh, the jackpot we're seeing now, though, we're on target and we'll, uh, we'll meet our revenue goals. So this huge jackpot brings you up to the previous target is what you're saying? Yes, it does. And in fact, it'll probably take us over our target. Odds of winning. I've seen some, some numbers, one in 175 million. Uh, is that roughly correct? Yes, it's about one in 175.8 million or something like that. It's almost uh, one in 176 million. Tell me this. If the winner, if there's one winner, and that one winner happens to be in the state of New Jersey, does New Jersey get more money as a result of that? Well, it'll collect the income tax on it. Uh, I mean, this, this jackpot, if it hits at $640 million, I'm not quite sure what that cash equivalent will be, but the withholding uh, tax in New Jersey will be 3%. And if the uh, cash jackpot is, say, $450 million, you can see that 3% of that is a sizable uh, tax revenue for the state, along with the fact that about 42% of our sales are going to go to the state in terms of our net revenue contribution. And the money, where does the money precisely go? Uh, New Jersey lottery proceeds go to fund education and institutions. The people who win the big jackpots, we've often heard some, some horror stories, the winner's curse that's been called. Do, do you folks at the lottery ever kind of bring people in and kind of counsel them, the big jackpot winners, about what they might be facing? We don't counsel uh, winners on uh, how to handle their money, but we do advise all of the winners to seek their own professional counsel. I mean, I'm a CPA myself, so I always recommend that winners uh, seek the advice of their own accountants or their other financial advisors. I think that's very important. Uh, we don't give uh, specific advice, but we certainly advise winner to, winners to seek their own advice. You had that lawsuit in, in what was it, Elizabeth just a few weeks ago where one individual yes. was sued by others who claimed that they were part of a lottery pool. Any advice for people who buy as, a, as part of a pool? Yes, I do. Uh, we've been publishing uh, our sort of guidelines for office pools or pool players. It, you know, we strongly advise that people that take part in a pool clearly establish what the rules are. They all should know in advance who's in and who's out of the pool. Uh, if somebody comes around to collect money today, for instance, to get into an office pool, they should know who's contributing, how much is being contributed, where the tickets are going to be purchased, who's going to buy the tickets. And I think most of, important of all, they should all get a copy of those tickets before tonight's draw. Uh, both front and back of the ticket, because each ticket has a serial number, and from that it can always be identified as to exactly where those tickets were purchased. And if somebody does buy tickets for the pool and then wants to buy their own tickets, they should buy their own personal tickets separate and apart, even in a different uh, retail location from where they buy the pool tickets. Well, one way or another this evening, history is going to be made, and Carol Hedinger, we appreciate your joining us to talk about uh, what is to be in a, just a, a short period of time. Thank you. Thank you.